Alright, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be updating you guys on Tropical Storm Dorian and all updates going on with that one. We do have a lot of new news, new track. It looks like it's going to take the north end of what we were talking about in previous forecasts. But before we get started with this video, though, I would ask you to subscribe if you do like weather-related content. And also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now, let's get right into things. We're looking at satellite imagery here, and you can see it is located just to the east of the Leeward Islands. It is going to make impact with these islands. If you are on vacation there or happen to live there and you are watching my videos, I'll be talking about some of the warnings and watches up for you guys in just a moment here. But we are looking at satellite and you can see there is some good rotation to it. It is starting to get its act together. I believe we have 60 mile per hour winds within it. That's what I've heard re most recently. So that's, that's a pretty good amount of wind and we're going to need to talk about that because it's getting to the point of being pretty dangerous. Now, we're going to go ahead and move on and talk about some of the factors here. We do have some shear here. You can see just to the west of it, there is an area of a little bit of shear there it is going to interact with. And then near Dominican Republic and Cuba, it will eventually interact with that bit of shear as well. So we're going to have to talk about that because that will actually help break this one up just a little bit. Probably going to uh, go back into tropical storm status after possibly turning into a hurricane. We'll talk more about that as well because that is a big possibility at this point that we do see a category one at least and then maybe back to a tropical storm at some point. And then after that, we don't really know for sure what's going to happen, but we do have an idea of the direction it's headed. Now, here's your Saharan dust. You can see again to the west of it, there is an area of more dust and more dry air. This is, again, going to help break this one up and make sure it doesn't become too big of a hurricane. If it didn't have the shear or the dust to deal with, I mean, this one would probably not just become possibly a Category 1. We'd maybe be talking about Category 2 or 3 plus. So that is really good news that there is that dust and shear in place because that's really going to end up what what's going to end up saving a lot of people here from a lot of damage and possibly even lives just because of the fact that it is going to help to break this one up quite a bit and keep it... Uh, on the low scale of the hurricane and tropical storm scale. Now, here's your spaghetti model. So you can see that we do, we, earlier on, I think the last video I made on this one was two days ago, we were talking about a possible head-on collision with the Dominican Republic, and now it looks like it could maybe 50% chance that it hits it just on the very, very northeast end of that island. But there's also a 50% chance that it actually misses it to the northeast, and that would really... Make, make it not break up as much. If it does hit the island, it's going to break up with a lot of those tall mountains. If it heads just to the east of it, though, we won't see quite as much uh, of that breaking up of the storm, and it's really going to cause it to... It's going to be the difference between a weak tropical storm and a strong tropical storm probably at this point as it heads north of the Dominican Republic and Haiti and possibly, most likely, into the Bahamas. And then from that point... That's the question mark that we'll have to talk about in a future video. Now, here's your here's your GF, GEFS track, and I just wanted to show you how differently these storms take it after it reaches the Bahamas. You can see that the G, GEFS has it impacting Florida, almost all but one, have it hitting Florida directly and then heading into the Gulf. So that's what the GEFS is thinking as of 12Z. Now, the JEPS model, which is the Canadian model, has a completely different story. It is all over the place, and the GFS is a much better model. But the Canadian does have the possibility for that Gulf entry, even going south of Cuba. That's a first for sure. Uh, we have five models or so that take it into the, Gulf, into the Gulf, and then we have about 10 that take it to the East Coast. So this is the difference we're talking about after it reaches the Bahamas. But for the most part, both of these ensemble models take it into the Bahamas. It's just what they do after that that's different, which is interesting. Now here's your intensity guidance according to the models. And you can see, again, there's a pretty decent chance here that it does enter Category 1 status within the next 48 hours. And then stay there for quite a while. Half of them have it. Half of the models that have it hitting Category One status have it dropping off after about 72 to 84 hours, and then the other half actually keep it in Category One status for quite a while. And I believe those are the ones that have it missing to the northeast, actually, of Dominican Republic. That would make a lot of sense. But there is that good chunk of them that don't even take it into hurricane status. I'm sure those models also have it hitting Dominican Republic as well. Now here's NOAA's official forecast for this one. You can see. We are going to talk about the warnings and watches here, but you can see their track is to take it just 
skirting along that northeast coast of Dominican Republic. And you can see that they do actually have this becoming a hurricane by 2 a.m. Wednesday and staying that way until about 2 p.m. Wednesday at least. But sometime in between 2 p.m. Wednesday and 2 p.m. Thursday, this one goes back to a tropical storm status, probably just after making impact with the Dominican Republic. This one will go back down the tropical storm status. But for now, we do have some concerns for the Leeward Islands here, where we are going to have a tropical storm hit these islands directly. In those blue shades, we do have a tropical storm warning. And these are areas that are being warned right now that there is a tropical storm coming. There is going to be lots of flooding rains and tropical storm status winds. And in the yellow areas, we have a tropical storm watch. And this is an area where we're a little bit less worried at this point, but you might be upgraded to a warning. And that would be, uh, again, you might have a warning come in. But if you're in the watch, that doesn't mean underestimate this one because you still are probably going to get a lot of rain and wind from this one. Just the areas in the warnings are definitely the areas that are going to be hit directly and you definitely need to seek action immediately. Now, we want to look at our tropical storm force wind speed probabilities according to NOAA. And you can see the areas within green to yellow, you're at that 50% or below stage of receiving tropical storm winds. If you're in the orange to purple shade, that's where you're at 50% plus chance at tropical storm winds. In the purple region, we do have 90% plus, so you're almost guaranteed at receiving tropical storm force winds in some of those leeward islands right there. Then you can see that red area actually interacts with Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic as well, so some portions of those two islands are almost definitely going to receive tropical storm status winds, which is crucial to know. Then it, within these green areas here, this is a hurricane force wind speed probabilities, and we do have a 5 to 30% chance of hurricane force winds interacting with Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. So this is something we're going to need to watch and definitely keep an eye on your, if you are there, keep an eye on the local warnings and everything going on because, you know, you might be receiving hurricane force winds from this one. Now, we're going to be taking a look at our 850 millibar cyclonic vorticities. I love to look at this. This is according to the ECMWF. And I just wanted to show the difference between it hitting Dominican Republic or not hitting Dominican Republic. You can see here, this is the European. And you can see it actually is just to the north of Dominican Republic. And actually, the eye misses the Dominican Republic. And actually, this is going to be a big, big player in this one and actually going to make a huge difference. I've been talking about this for almost all of the updates that I've made with this storm. If this does take the European track, we are going to move on to the next frame here. You can see that it does just continue to intensify as it crosses the Bahamas and eventually reaches Florida. Almost all of these models after the Bahamas at least have this one interacting with Florida in some way. So I am quite confident that Florida will be impacted by this one in some way or the other. According to the European model, though, we have a direct impact there along the east coast of Florida. And it's in the dark red here, which is the strongest values actually available for this product, which means this is going to be very intense rotation within this one, or vorticity, if you will. So we will be seeing impacts again in Florida and Bahamas in some way or the other. And if it misses Dominican Republic, it's just going to continue to intensify from that point. Now, the GFS, you can see, has it well, we're looking right now, it's to the south of Dominican Republic, headed north. So you can tell that it is going to make a direct impact and cross over Dominican Republic. And you can see after that frame, it breaks up completely as it is located there in the Bahamas. But it is just nothing like it used to be. It's not even tropical storm status at this point. It's hardly a tropical wave. It's probably an area of thunderstorms over the Bahamas if it makes that sort of impact with the Dominican Republic. So that's how much of a difference that would make if it interacted with those tall uh, mountains within the island of Haiti and Domin Dominican Republic. So what we want to go ahead and do is get into my official forecast for this one. Now look at the right hand side of your screen first off. Our location is 12.7 degrees north by 58.8 degrees west. Winds at 60 miles per hour, very intense winds. Our low pressure center is 1,002 millibars. Our movement is west at 14 miles per hour. So this one is moving quite fast along the Atlantic. And as you can see by my track, we're going to go ahead and zoom in here. So I do have the chance for it to make that southerly track and interact with the southern portions of Dominican Republic. I also have that option for it to go very far north and actually make a direct impact with Puerto Rico, though I don't expect 
a very direct impact with Puerto Rico. I think it is possible, and the European kind of teases that idea that that is possible. And I think the most likely outcome at this point is something in between the GFS and the European, with both being very possible. I think the most likely path is going to be just to skim just along that northern edge of the Dominican Republic and make its way into the Bahamas and likely still be a tropical system, whether that be tropical storm or hurricane or tropical depression. I believe it will be, still be a tropical system of some sort and move into the Bahamas. And beyond that, again, most likely outcome is that it will interact with Florida in some way and then move into the Gulf or kind of try to move up the East Coast and then get eaten up along the Georgia or South Carolina coast as there's going to be uh, a pattern that's not too favorable for it to move up the entire East Coast, we don't think at least at this point, but those are basically the options at this point. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this tropical forecast for uh, for Tropical Storm Dorian. I've been a bit under the weather. I'm having a, a little bit of an allergic reaction right now, so I have not been feeling good at all. So if I was uh, kind of groggy during this video, I do apologize. I'm also on vacation right now. I'm in the beautiful Jekyll Island, Georgia. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, and I'm right there just trying to enjoy my time right now. I'm, I'm not having too good of a time with the allergic reaction I'm having. But uh, I'm trying to make the best of it and still bring weather content for you guys. So this one was, again, if I seemed a little sleepier under the weather, that's why. And I apologize for it. But I'm just trying to bring you guys some content that I feel is very important. Anyway, guys, see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.